everyone, welcome back to the workshop today. I wanna to do a little bit of a project, a little bit of a resource share with you. And one of my favorite materials to work with in my workshop with the lasers, both CO2 and the diode is Baltic birch plywood and specifically eighth inch Baltic birch plywood, which has become kind of hard to acquire recently. And so I do have some recommendations on where you can find this, but I wanted to talk about just a couple projects of uh, that can maybe inspire you and also help organize your workshop. So, uh, let's jump right into it. Now, the reason I like Baltic birch plywood is that it is very strong, but also still very light, especially in this eighth inch material. Uh, but more importantly, its layers are very consistent and the top veneer layers are actually about as thick as the rest of the layers. So you can actually do a little bit of sanding without going right through that top veneer. So it also tends to be very consistent material and you can get it graded in various qualities and that helps ensure if you get a higher quality that you're gonna have fewer issues with glue pockets and voids and other things that are a real downer when working with our lasers. So, uh, like I said, I am going to share some links at the end of this as to where to find some of this material. But for now, let's jump into the projects we're gonna be looking at. All right, now, if you are like me in your workshop, you have all sorts of glues hanging around and you want to keep them organized you want to keep them kind of maybe together with various materials and that can be a chore uh, you put them on shelf space it's easy for them to get knocked over and so uh, i'm going to show you one thing that i designed and another thing that a friend of mine designed and how you can make them too so let's look into the first one which is going to be an epoxy carrier for your typical five minute uh, epoxy in these uh, nine ounce bottles that you can get at most home centers. So let me show you that quick and light burn and then we'll cut it out and put it together. All right, so this is what we are working with. And this is our cut file. We have the two side risers that we have our top and our bottom shelf and then a front and back bracket. And so this will all tab and notch together. The bottles can sit in here and sit upright on this shelf. Or if we want them upside down, then this should allow the nozzle part of the bottle to sit in while it still supports the rest of the bottle lip. That way your epoxy is uh, ready to go instead of holding it upside down waiting for it to run. Now on the back here, these are just spaced out for, if you have a pegboard type wall, you can put this on some small hooks, hang it on there, or you can put screws in the wall and hang it on there just if you want it to be wall mounted as well. So I'm gonna be cutting this out on the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt. We've got it set up for about 375 millimeters a minute. We're gonna blast through at 100% power. That's gonna be with our air on. So let's go ahead and send this to the laser and see how it works. All right, so these are the basic parts to it. So we have our, our side pieces, we have our front and back, and then we have our bottom and top shelf. So if we have these all set up right, they should just piece in together. Now you will probably want to use some glue with this. You could probably adjust your kerf to get it to be a, a friction fit, but um, to be sure, you would definitely want to glue this together. And that can just be some quick CA glue, but as you see, it should go together like so. And then this one right on the back. And there you would have the epoxy caddy. All right, so this is typical five minute JB Weld epoxy that I picked up at the home center. And as you can see, these will slide in there. Nice snug fit holds them upright but if you're getting ready to use them you can flip them upside down so that they will make sure all the glue is ready facing down you wouldn't want to store it like this because uh, epoxy could eventually drip out but uh, then you have them ready to use so just a quick little epoxy caddy jig nice for organization all right, so moving on to some more intricate designs, I have a three that are available here. These are actually from my friend Chris at A Glimpse Inside. He's developed these to be cut out of roughly a 15 by 15 inch sheet of material. And so they're perfect for the diode lasers, but 
perfectly fine on most CO2 lasers as well. And so he has three variations of this. This one is for your typical type bond glue bottles. Um, and then he has one for type bond style CA and then one for star bond style CA. Uh, the nice thing about these is they hold the glue on top. They have some slots for some of your uh, glue type handles and such, and then an extra little carrier spot at the bottom. Plus on the back, he includes the French cleats. And if you haven't seen what Chris does, he does a ton of shop organization items and he loves French cleats. He has outfitted most of his shop with French cleats. And what those are nice is that you can easily go hang this up on the wall, uh, leave it there, it's nice and secure, but when you need to take it off, you can just lift it off and carry it over to where you need it to be. So let's get some of these cut out. I'll show you how one of these fits together because they actually snap together, no glue needed, and it's pretty slick. So we'll cut them out, we'll get them assembled, and we'll take a look at all three when we're done. All right, so I have the parts of this one laid out and they all are gonna to snap together and it goes pretty smoothly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with our base and we're gonna build up the center part first. So what we need to do is put our kind of solid back wall in. And so these are just gonna kind of push and they snap in together and uh, then they hold in place. Like I said, this is a glue caddy that needs no glue to hold together. You can always go back and reinforce it with maybe a little thin CA or wood glue as you're putting it together, but it shouldn't be needed because once you get this all together, they do hold fairly well. So we've got that one in. Now we need to place these in. So just real carefully go, let's actually start with the back pieces. Now we're gonna push this in. Just take your time. You don't wanna break any of these tabs. They Feel like they might but they do just kind of go in and just work your way around there we go so we've got that and then we can put our riser pieces in for this top shelf again just supporting it as you push in And then we can place our top shelf on. There we go. Now all that's left is put our sides on. So you want the uh, French cleat parts going towards the back. So just kind of start lining those up. Make sure they're all like so. And then the other side. There we go. And now, as you can see, that is very strong. I can't, you know, it's not coming apart. I mean, you really wanted to, you could pull that apart, but it's a very strong design. And the nice thing is, it should fit a nice variety of these bottle style Starbond glues. So you can keep them all together, all organized. And then this bottom shelf, you can throw in some extra supplies, some of the uh, extra caps and whatnot that come with these. But uh, there you go, you can move them around. You know, obviously if I tip it too far, they're gonna fall out, but it helps keep them secure. 
in one spot, nice and organized. Let's put the last one together. All right, so we have the three of them put together here, and as you can see, they do their respective jobs really nicely. Now, this end one is, he actually designed around the tight bond glue that you can find at many home centers and as well as Rockler and Woodcraft. But I found that this one actually fits well with my Bob Smith Industries glue. I've been using that stuff for years and love it, but Starbond as well is a very big favorite of mine. So it's nice to have a specifically built caddy for these, and so, um, definitely check them out as you see fit. He does offer both the kits for assembly on his website as well as the cut files as many of you on my channel probably have your own lasers and would like to cut them out. So I will leave a link down to that below to where you can find these cut files yourself. All right, so where do you find Baltic Birch plywood? Well, uh, there's a few places you can look. One, if you have a local hardwoods dealer in your area, Look them up, ask them about it. Oftentimes, if they don't have it, they can get it in for you. Sometimes it's cheaper for them to bring it in on a load that they're already ordering for uh, versus you paying shipping uh, from somewhere else. Uh, otherwise, there are some definitely some good places online. And one of them, as a matter of fact, is my friend Chris at A Glimpse Inside. He is actually offering maker's packs of Baltic Birch plywood. He pre-cuts them down to 15 by 15 inch squares. That allows him to be able to ship them, but also for People with dial lasers that kind of maximizes the area. It's not quite going to fill out some of the larger ones, but uh, it's going to cut out. It's going to work for most of your cut area. So he's offering a pretty good deal. You know, he is a maker. He's trying to help out makers while also supporting his family. So definitely check him out if you're looking in to get a good deal on some Baltic Birch plywood for you to try yourself. All right, so that is going to wrap it up for this video. I hope that you can either play around with these files or use it as inspiration to create some of your own shop organization using your laser. Uh, I will have links to all of these products down below. Some of them will be affiliate links and they do go to help me out. So I appreciate you using them, but as always, no pressure. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it interesting, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, definitely hit that subscribe button. Also, if you wanna have more live interaction with myself and David from the Clack Shack, be sure to check out our Sunday night live streams. We do the weekly live stream where we talk about our current projects, a little bit about maybe new products that we're checking out, but a lot of it is really just feedback from users and answering questions on the live stream, whether it be questions about a machine, questions about getting started in the business, uh, whatever. Uh, sometimes we just talk about the weather, but uh, it's a fun time. Uh, it's uh, 7 p.m. Central, and uh, there'll be links to that down below, or you can find it on my channel as well. Once again, thank you for stopping by. I hope to see you back again. But in the meantime, I hope you can get out into your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.